Soon the calendar says 2023, and the wine market is steering safely into a new year with stable returns. We're taking the temperature on the wine market right now, and we'll look at various scenarios for 2023 later in this video. And welcome to you, Jonas Bill, Commercial Director of Rare Wine Invest, and it's been well over three months since we were here the last time. Um, can you put into words why are we here again? We're here today, Lars. Uh, first of all, our current investors and new investors uh, responded positively to the previous video status that we released in the late summer. And then, of course, it's because we monitor the wine market every day of the year and want to share our insights. The premise for wine investment has stayed the same. Uh, despite uncertainties, macroeconomic and geopolitical shifts in the world. But Rune, can you elaborate on what it is that keeps these basic premises of wine investment intact? Yes, that's my last. First, wine is still a long-term investment asset with low volatility. So wine is not as vulnerable as many other assets to rising inflation, recession, etc. It's naturally all about supply and demand, but also increasing wine interest and rising living standards in many parts of the world. Especially when we look at the growth of potential future buyers, it becomes particularly attractive. According to the Wealth Report by Knight Frank, we will see an increase of approximately 25 to 30 percent in numbers of ultra high net worth individuals in the world within the next five years. And even more so for uh, high net worth individuals in the world. Those basic premises have not changed, nor have they in previous downturns. After all, the past year has been very good for our investors last. One shall remember that wine is fundamentally not suitable for high risk, high reward investment. After all, wine is characterized by moderate annual increase and low risk. So last we talk about a normalization in the wine market and the long horizon that we communicate from day one with our investors. It is certainly not wrong when it's communicated widely in the media how well wine is doing now regarding returns. Still, we owe ourselves a critical look at the market situation. In a challenging market, wine is up by 14.3% year to date, according to the broad fine wine 1000 index from UK wine exchange Livex. For good reason, we do not know if we are in the eye of the hurricane or if the storm is about to begin in the financial markets. But what we do know about is wine investment. And if we are to be critical and reflect on the wine market right now, um, do we believe that the positive trend will continue in 2023? It's not unnatural for the market to take a breather upon an exceptional performance over the last year and a half. But here again, you must remember that the basic premises remains unchanged. It's still about the long run. Even if prices was to fall slightly, that is not a problem, Lars. We have seen it all before. Can you elaborate on how the market will be affected by this? Definitely, Lars. Then we need to look at some historical steps. In the short term, fewer buyers will be in the market for the most expensive bottles. Less trading activity and fewer price points mean it will be harder to price the most costly bottles if you're selling them right now. In the short, they mean they become less liquid, not to be confused that we cannot sell the bottles. What can be learned from historical uh, downturns such as 2008 financial crisis is that there is a lower limit to how cheap wine can get before someone buys up. As we saw during the financial crisis, it took less than a year for the wine to be back at pre-crisis levels. Let's stress for the record that the situation is not directly comparable to the financial crisis in 2008. With fewer potential buyers than a year ago for the best bottles, it also presents opportunities for those who want to invest. So what are the opportunities to be on the lookout for in the foreseeable future? Yeah, good question, Lars. In the last year, there has been extraordinary numbers of buyers for the best wines. Now we are approaching a level more like usual, which means it is again possible to get some of the very best wines for a reasonable price. For example, let's talk about champagne, Lars. Champagne as a category is still far too cheap if we compare it to Burgundy or Bordeaux. We often refer to champagne as the wine world's equivalent to government bonds. Even though we might be looking into a period of economical downturn, champagne will always be attractive driven by consumption and relatively low prices. The best Burgundy wines are another example. They've been almost impossible to source, especially in larger quantities. But hopefully we'll see some openings here too. Definitely, Lars. Here the supply and demand balance will forever favor our investors. Hopefully we can also offer some opportunities here that we couldn't just six months ago. Burgundy is experienced a streak of vintages with yields that are way below average, meaning that Burgundy will be even more attractive in the long run. 
another asset that has shown excellent crisis resistance is Italian wines. We saw this back in the financial crisis, for example. But the market situation is also very similar to the picture we saw a few years ago when 2018 was a good year for investors, but 2019 and 2020 were challenged by the trade war and the turmoil in Hong Kong. During that period, we saw how the Italian sub index, Italy 100, was among the best performers. How is it that Italian wine performs so steadily? That's an excellent question, Lars. And now it's not like people stop drinking wine. The Italian wines are priced uh, in a range where many people can join. Um, they are not as expensive as Champagne or Burgundy. So we are dealing with a constant high consumption. And we're looking into some fascinating vintages from Tuscany, Barolo and Barbaresco. Now we have uh, mentioned some of the opportunities in the market, but let's for a moment uh, discuss what investors should try to avoid in the foreseeable future. Naturally. And here, uh, Bordeaux is still an area which, which one must be very careful. The best Bordeaux wines, such as Petrus, Le Pin or Chavo Blanc, will still be a good investment in the long run. However, Lars, some of the younger Bordeaux wines will not be as attractive in a five or ten years horizon as some of the earlier mentioned wines. The quantity versus consumption ratio needs to be more attractive and the price starting points need to be lowered. Also, we might even see tiny price drops for the younger vintages. As with all asset classes, there are no guarantees when investing. Yet the third quarter of 2022 has shown that investors through Rare Wine Invest have bought more wine than ever. What is making investors seek out wine at this time? The stock market hasn't been attractive as most are familiar with. Investors are looking for more stable and crisis resistant asset classes where they can place their funds and still sleep well at night. When the stock market does well, wine typically does well. But when the stock market does poorly, wine doesn't necessarily do poorly. Our data set shows a trading pattern we've seen in the past, where the vacuum between buyer and seller has widened, and short-term tradability may be less than in the past. All over, liquidity is lower. It's like that in real estate, in bonds, and other asset classes, also with wine. But what makes you think that now is a good time to invest in wine only? Good question, Lars. We have an extensive database to select the wines that we both believe in and that our analytics shows is likely to become more valuable. With the market we have now, you can get an attractive starting point for your investment. Or acquire previously unattainable wines. And of course, general investment theory applies here too. The sooner you buy up, the longer time can work for you. The trading pattern we are seeing is reminiscent of the premises on which investors in 2018 and 2019 bought in. And they are some of the happiest investors today. So even if we look into a period where prices don't rise quite as much as we've been accustomed to over the last year and a half, or even if you see minor price declines in individual positions, the premise for wine investment remains intact. And with those words, it's time to round off from here. On rarewineinvest.com and our other channels, you can stay up to date on the latest investment recommendations and general trends from the wine market. Thank you for watching. Thank you.